Well, hello, PS51, and welcome back to DreamYard. For our last class, we were creating characters. And for our characters, we created settings. Settings are the environment where a character is. So let's focus on two things for today's lesson. Character and setting. The more information you give about your character, the better it is for a person who's looking at your drawing or reading the story. They know more about your character and it creates more interest. You could describe my character by drawing some of my physical traits or even writing about them. But what else could give some more information about my character? Maybe my clothes. And what if I added more details like a pair of glasses? Hopefully we're all familiar with character. For example, do you know this character? <laughs> I bet you do. That's the Black Panther. Now, if our goal is to tell a good story, once we've developed our character, what could we develop next? The setting! Yay! I think you're right. So before we continue, let's create our I can statement. I can create better characters and better settings. What can you tell me about my setting? Not very much. I'm sitting in a room possibly with a big white curtain behind me. It reminds me of some of our drawings. Sometimes we might draw a portrait or a character on our white piece of paper and there's nothing around them. That doesn't give us a lot of information. So after we've drawn our character, how can we draw and create our setting? Well, let's think about our character. Where does our character live? Or well, where is the character when you're drawing the picture? Is the character in their home? Are they outside? Are they playing basketball? Ha! So let's play a game. I want to play a game of tell and show. I want to tell you a story first, and then I want to show you that story. Here's how we'll do it. First, let me tell you the story. Mr. Mark came home from work excited about an idea he had for an art project. He came home, he rushed into his room, he got his art pad out, and started to draw some of his artistic ideas. Now, that's the telling of the story. How do we show it? Well, first, I need a setting! Yay! <laughs> now, we have a room. And now I have a setting in which to tell my story. So now that I've told you the story, let me show you that story in action. One, two, three, action! Mr. Mark came home from work excited about an idea he had for an art project. He came home, he rushed into his room, he got his art pad out and started to draw some of his artistic ideas. That was an example of tell and show. First I told you the story, I thought it out in my head, and then I acted it out and I showed it to you. For today's lesson, you'll need your previous artwork, that's your artwork that you did last week, two sheets of paper, pencil, scissors, and some glue. You'll need your artwork from last week to complete this project. If you don't have it, try to complete the lesson before this one and then do this one afterwards. If you have your portraits, it's time to cut them out. So you'll need a pair of scissors. To hold your scissors properly, you see that there are two holes. There's a large hole and a small one, or you're gonna fit three fingers in the bigger hole. Then your thumb, you know your thumb, put it in the smaller hole, and then you can move the scissors back and forth. That way you have lots of control. All right, let's practice that again. See the two holes? There's one big one and one smaller. Put your three fingers, look at my three fingers. Do you see the three fingers that I'm using? I put those in the big hole, and then I have the other finger that I can hold around it. And then I put my thumb in the smaller hole, and that way I have the best control over scissors to cut. Now, I'm gonna cut out each panel. 
You remember, the panels are where the folds are in the paper. So I can cut a straight line across and then a straight line up. And then another straight line. Now I have my two portraits. Now that they're cut out, I think I can control my scissors and practice by cutting it out a little bit better. I want to show as much of the person as I can without the paper around them. So I'm going to try to cut closer to the picture without cutting off anything. I don't want to cut off my head or my ears, but I cut close to the picture as I can to get rid of some of that extra white paper. Once you've cut your characters out as best you can, it's time to get out those two sheets of white paper. Place one character on each sheet of paper. Now it's time to glue them down. If you don't have glue, don't worry about it. You can just keep them on the paper. But if you do have glue, especially a glue stick, make sure not to turn the glue all the way up. That's too much glue. You're only going to use a little bit of glue. Turn your character on the back and put some glue on it and then press it down onto the paper. Hey, do you think that you can finish the art project on your own? It's time to try to apply some of the art skills that you've already learned. Think about your character, think about what they're wearing, and think about their setting. And then fill up your space so that you have great composition. Don't leave too much empty space on your paper. Fill it up with lots of details. All right, I'm going to finish up my drawing, and you finish up your drawing, and we'll see each other for our next lesson. Bye for now, PS51.